Hello, sports fans and baseball fans and Stratomatic baseball fans. We're here again with Mismatch Monday. And this time, it really is a mismatch. You have the 1976 Kansas City Royals, who won the American League Western Division with 90 wins, but went on to lose to the Yankees in the ALCS. Going up against my 1976 White Sox, who only won 64 games and finished in 6th place in the West. So it is a true mismatch. We are in uh, Comiskey Park for this game. And Comiskey in 1976 was a 1-9 for both types hitters on singles. And it was only a 1 on home runs. The pitching matchup today... For the Kansas City Royals, it's going to be Marty Patton. Marty Patton in 1976 was 8-14 with a 249 earned run average and allowed 114 hits and 141 innings pitched. And he's going to be opposed by Goose Gossage, the Goose. And yes, he was a relief pitcher more famously later in his career. But for the White Sox in 1976, he was a starter, and he pitched 224 innings, allowing 214 hits, and had a 9-17 record with a 394 earned run average. So, with that having been said, we have the visiting Royals, and the way that the visiting Royals are going to line up is Amos Otis in center field, Hal McRae in left, George Brett, the third hitter and playing third base, John Mayberry, the first baseman. Tom Paquette will be in right. Frank White at second. Freddie Patek at short. Bob Stinson at catcher. And Marty Patton, the pitcher, batting ninth. And they are going up, as I said, against the Goose, Goose Gossage. And Amos Otis will be the first hitter. Ooh, and uh, that we moved the whole stadium there. 5'6". Uh, he is a righty on a righty. Uh, they're both right-handed pitchers, and that's going to be a fly ball to center field. The old F8, and uh, Hal McCray is the batter now. And he gets a 210, and a 210 against a righty is a walk. So he is aboard with a walk, and George Brett. Given he's paving the way for George Brett. Hall of Famer George Brett. And he gets a 1-8, and 1-8 is going to be a single double asterisk against a righty, and so the goose is already in trouble here. The goose could be cooked early. And John Mayberry is the batter with runners at first and third. One out. I'm going to play the infield back and hope for the double play. He gets a 3-9, and that's exactly what he gets. A ground ball to the first baseman double play. So, Kansas City comes away with no runs despite threatening, and that brings up the White Sox. And the way the White Sox are going to line up today is Chet Lemon in center, George Orta in left, Ralph Gar in right field, Jimmy Spencer, uh, gold glove first baseman at first, Kevin Bell at third. Brian Downing of California Angels fame. He went on later to be on the Angels and not play catcher much anymore. He will be the catcher. And Jack Brohammer at second, batting eighth. And another uh, soon-to-be Yankee, along with Gossage, is Bucky Dent. And Bucky Dent will be the shortstop with Goose batting ninth. And so we have the... Uh, the White Sox line up here with Chet Lemon, the first batter, and he gets a 5-5. Five, five. That's a righty on a righty, and that's going to be a ground ball shortstop. So he goes out 6-3 with George Orta batting. And he gets a 4-3. He's a lefty, and that's going to be a ground ball first base. So he goes... Uh, Ground out three, and Ralph Gar. Ralph Gar gets a 5-7. He is a lefty, and that's going to be a ground ball. Second base X. 
The second baseman for the White Sox is White. He is a 2. That is a 12. Probably going to be an out, but I will double check it, as we usually do. And no, it's we've got to go on to his uh, E rating. And his E rating is 26, so we'll roll the two blue dice and get the, re the uh, reading. 26 and an 11 is going to be a ground ball A. So, uh, he goes 4-3, to three, Gar does. And no runs come in for the White Sox there. We go to the uh, top of the second with Tom Paquette, the batter. He gets a 4-5. He is a left-handed batter, and that is going to be a fly ball to center field. The old F8 again. Rears its ugly head, and... Frank White is the batter. He gets a 210. This is a righty on a righty, and that's going to be a ballpark single possibility, but it's an out. So um, he instead um, gets a ground ball to the shortstop. Six to three, and Freddie Patek is the batter. And he gets a 5 7. He is a righty on the righty, and that's going to be a strikeout. So no runs come in for the 76 Royals as we go to the bottom of the second with the White Sox sending up Jim Spencer, their first baseman. And he gets a 5-3. He is a lefty on a righty, and that is going to be a fly ball right field X. Um, the right fielder for the Royals is Paquette. That is a 3. That's a 15 on the roll. And uh, corner outfield 15-3 is an out. F7 and Kevin Bella. And he gets a 6-3. He is a righty and that is going to be a ground ball to the pitcher. He is a 2. That is a 12. Let's see what happens on that one. That's going to be on his E rating, and his E rating is a 10. So we will roll the dice, and he gets a 5 on an E10. And that is going to be an E1. So Patton throws the ball away and allows uh, Kevin Bell to be safe. E1 and Downing up. So Downing's up with a man aboard and one down. And he gets a 2-8. And against a righty, that's going to be a fly ball right field. So he flies out. Fly out to nine. And that brings Jack Brohammer, the second baseman, up with two down and a man at first. And he gets a 3-10. And that's going to be a foul out to the catcher. So, the White Sox get no runs in the second. We go to the top of the third. We're still in a scoreless game. Tight, scoreless game here between the uh, White Sox and the Royals. Bob Stinson, the catcher, gets a 5-3. He is a switch hitter, so he's batting left against uh, the, uh, the, the Goose. And that is going to be a ground ball to first. That's where our man, Gold Glover, uh, Spencer is, and that's a 17 and a 17 is going to be an out. So that's a ground out three. And Marty Patton is up the pitcher. Looking for a pitcher card roll. We got it, and it's a strikeout. With two down quickly, you've got Amos Otis up back to the top of the Kansas City order, and that is a 6-7. He is a righty, and that is going to be a ground ball second base X. The second baseman for the White Sox is Brohammer, and he's a three. That is a 16. Let's see what happens there. 16 and three is going to be an out. It's a ground out. So um, he grounds out four to three, and no runs again come in for Kansas City in the third inning. 
And we're going to the bottom of the third. Bucky Dent, the shortstop, gets a 4-7. He is a righty. That is going to be a fly ball center field. That brings up the pitcher, the goose. The goose gets a walk. So the goose works a walk here. Nice. On his guard, no less. And is that the first base runner? Um, well, it's the first base runner that got on other than an error. We did have someone get on by an error. <coughs> Chet Lemon is up. We're back to the top of the order. A 4-6, and he is a righty, and that is going to be a strikeout. Or no, it's a ground ball third base B. Sorry, ground ball third base B. And so now he is the uh, runner at first. And there's two down, and George Orta up. And he gets a 3-3, and that is going to be a ballpark single, and it is. Ballpark single for the main man, George Orta. And we got two aboard with two down. And Ralph Gar, the batter, a left-handed batter, too. And he gets a 4-10, and that is going to be a fly ball left field. So the threat ends, fly out seven. But we're still in a scoreless game with a much better Royals team. Very, uh, very odd at this point, but... You know, worst things have happened. I guess Gossage was one of our better starting pitchers that year. Amos Otis gets a 3-8, and that's going to be a single. Righty on righty. Or wait a minute. This is, uh, it should be George Brett. According to this, it should be George Brett. So, what is a 3-8 on? Nope, it's a fly ball. So, George Brett flies out to lead off the fourth. And Tom Paquette is the batter with one, or no, Mayberry. Mayberry is the batter with one down, and uh, he gets a 3-8. He is a righty on a righty. That's a ground ball B to first base. So it's a ground out three. And now Tom Paquette is up. And he gets a 311, which is going to be a ballpark single, and it is. So Paquette gets aboard with a single with the uh, token that I left on first base and shouldn't have. Frank White is up. He gets a 410. He is a righty. Righty on righty is going to be a ground ball shortstop A, and so he is out. And again, Kansas City held to nothing. It's being, uh, it's shocking how um, unimpressive they are here. Jim Spencer is the the White Sox batter. He gets a 3-4, which is a fly out to left. Oh, wait a minute. That was supposed to be Gar. My God, I can't believe I didn't change these cards. No, wait, no, it, no, Garb was the last out, so it was Spencer. And, um, and with a 3-4, he did get a fly, fly out to left field. So that's a second fly to left field for him, and uh, Kevin Bell is the batter. Kevin Bell gets a 1-5, righty on righty, it's a strikeout. There's two down quickly, and that brings up Brian Downing. Brian Downing gets a 5-9, righty on righty, and that is going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. The shortstop is Patek. He is a shortstop, too. That is an 18. We will check it. Probably an out, and it is. So we go to the top of the fifth in a scoreless game. With the Kansas City lineup trying to get breakthrough and get something on Gossage with Freddie Patek the batter. He made the last out of the last inning, last half inning, and he gets a 3-7, which is a walk. So he's aboard. Here to lead off the fifth. And Bob Stinson is the batter. 
with the pitcher coming up, they're going to let him hit and try to get something, even though he isn't a good hitter. 1-7, that's a fly ball, center field B. There is one down with a man at first, and the pitcher is up, patting. They're going to let him hit, um, and he strikes out. They had to try to get something there because they already had an out. And now they're back to the top of the lineup, and it is Otis. And he gets a 4-10. He is a righty on a righty, and that's going to be a ground ball shortstop A. And again, Goose holds him scoreless, and we've got a scoreless tie here going to the bottom of the fifth between the 76 Royals and the 76 White Sox. And Brian Downing is up. This is a terrible lineup, obviously, and he gets a 6-10. That is going to be a um, ballpark single, and it is. So, um, well, wait a minute. No, this is supposed to be Brohammer. God, I, I'm bad about changing these cards. Uh, it, but it doesn't matter. Or wait a minute. Yes, it, it does. Well, no, it doesn't. It's still a ballpark single both ways, and it is a single. So Brohammer gets a board with a hit. And now Bucky Dent is up. i got to remember to change these cards with the last batter, which is why I have a score sheet. 6-7, and that is going to be a fly ball to center field, so Bucky Dent flies out. And that brings up the Goose, and the Goose is pitching Goose Eggs, so they're not going to take him out. And he gets a 2-12, which is a ground ball shortstop A. So he goes 6-3. to three. We're not scoring runs, but that's expected. What isn't expected is that Goose Gossage is shutting down this powerful... Kansas City lineup and Hal McRae is the batter and yes he is actually the batter so I got it right this time 4-6 and he is a righty on a righty and that's going to be a strikeout of course the goose big on the strikeout was a big uh, was a big part of his game and uh, George Brent is the batter he gets a 1-8 righty on righty and that is going to be a single so they have another base runner and with one down and John Mayberry up and he gets a 2-7 and that's going to be a walk and so now Kansas City has a bit of a threat going. They have two men on with only one out and Tom Paquette is the batter. Tom Paquette in 1976 batted 302 with 10 triples. So let's see what he can do. 4-5. He is a lefty, and that is going to be a fly ball center field B. So he flies out and leaves everything up to Frank White to try to get this run home from second to break through front. Finally, he gets a 4-9. And uh, he is a righty, and that is going to be a that's going to be an out. It's a line out to second base. Line out four, no runs again in the sixth. We go to the bottom of the sixth. This is a really good game between two teams who were separated in the standings by um, by like 26 wins. So Chet Lemon is up. He gets a 5-8. Uh, of course, my math is not all that great usually, so... But I think that's about what it is. 5-8, and he is a righty on a righty, and that's a pop-out to second base. So that was Chet Lemon in the bottom of the sixth. And that brings up George Orta. George Orta gets 3-7, and that is going to be a uh, double. Double, nice rip down the line. For George Orta. And maybe the White Sox can pull off the upset here with Ralph Gar up. And he gets a 3-6, but that's a ground ball shortstop B. That'll hold the runner. And uh, there is two down in this scoreless tie. Hope it's not a 20-inninger like the uh, Braves and uh, some other team forget who they played but anyway 
Jim Spencer gets a 111, and he is, against a righty, is going to be a ballpark home run, and that is not going to happen because you need a roll of one. So instead, what he ends up with is a fly ball to right field. So the deep fly gets the uh, Comiskey crowd on their, on their feet and hoping that something huge could happen, but it didn't. So, Freddie Patek is the leadoff batter here in the top of the seventh for the Royals in this scoreless tie. He gets a 5-3. He is a righty, and um, as a ground ball to first base, we've established he is a gold glove type first baseman. That is a 10. It's going to be on his card. He is, Spencer is a 2. So we will roll the dice. That is an 11, and first base 2 and that is going to be an E2. So it's a two base error. Two base error by Jim Spencer. That is not what they wanted to see from their gold glove first baseman, certainly. So that's an E3 that allows uh, Patek to go to second. Um, and now Stinson will, you know what? Man at second, he's a switch hitter. We're gonna let him hit. And he gets a 4-9. He is batting left. 4-9 uh, is going to be a single to center field. Now, the, the question is, do you send Patek? And he is a running one to 17. So uh, I'm not going to look at the arm right now. I'm just going to say, let's try it. And there's no way there is the, the outfielder with a negative 7. So he does score. And they finally do break through with an unearned run with a Stinson base hit, no less. And now um, Marty Patton is up, and he gets a 4-6, and he is a righty, and that is going to be a walk. Wait a minute. No, no, actually, no. That's a strikeout for a righty. And so um, Patton strikes out. There's two down, but... Or no, there isn't. There's one down. That's the first out. Um... Yeah, that's, that was the first out. And Amos Otis back to the top of the lineup, 1-7. That's going to be a fly ball center field B. It's going to be a shame if the Goose loses this game this way because of an error, but that's the White Sox for you. 3-12, and that's going to be a line out third base max, but it's only one out. It only lined out into one out because they didn't need any more than that. Um, so... Line out to third, ends the inning, but the Kansas City Royals get one in the seventh to take a one nothing lead, and Kevin Bell is up. They're still in this game, by the way. 3-5, and uh, he is a, this is a righty on righty, and that's going to be a single. So Kevin Bell getting a single to lead off. And... Up steps Brian Downing. Brian Downing gets a line out max to shortstop. So that is going to be a line out into a double play. And Brohammer is the batter. He ain't there anymore. And that's a 5-12. That is a lefty on a righty. That's a ground ball first base. Their first baseman is Mayberry. He's a 2. That's an 18. 18-2 um, and two is going to be an out. So they can't come up with a run there. We go to the top of the eighth inning. And uh, with the top of the eighth, we're going to take the goose out. He pitched admirably, but, uh, you know, we got to say that that's going to be it for him. And let's see who they're going to bring in. Okay, the new pitcher is going to be Clay Carroll. Clay Carroll, the righty, in 1976, he was 4-4 four four in 77 innings with a 256 earned run average. 
and uh, he's going to be tasked with holding the Royals right where they are with only a one nothing lead and George Brett the batter and he gets a 212 and uh, let's see here let's hope it is really George Brett it is 212 and that's going to be a ground ball second base a plus injury and that is a nine so he's injured for at least this game but we'll remember that um, let's see ground ball second base so um, four to three and Mayberry is up and he gets a one six and that's going to be a ground ball to the shortstop so he gets a six to three he's out six to three the White Sox pitching has been excellent this game and Tom Paquette gets a six four um, and he is a lefty and that is going to be a ground ball second base a so he goes four to three and we got to replace Brett in the field after they get no runs in the eighth and let's see who that's going to be Okay, the new third baseman is going to be Jamie Quirk. He is a third base 4E65. Not a good third baseman defensively, but he's going to come in and take over. In a game that you got to believe with the way um, Patton is shutting the White Sox down in a game that the Royals have won. And hopefully I just jinxed them. But... Um, uh, Bucky Dent is going to be the leadoff batter right here uh, with the Royals in the field in the bottom of the eighth. And he gets a 2-5, and that's going to be a righty on a righty, and it's a ground ball shortstop. So Bucky Dent goes 6-3. to three. And that brings up the pitcher spot, Clay Carroll, and they are going to pinch hit for him. And I know just who the pinch hitter is going to be, oddly. The pinch hitter will be Lamar Johnson who was in 1976 the backup third base or first baseman but 222 at bats he hit 320 and he gets a 111 which is going to be a ballpark single and it is so uh, Johnson gets aboard with a single and uh, after one out And Chet Lemon the batter. They got to get something going. They got the top of the order here. 2-9. And he is against a righty. And that is going to be a fly ball to right field. It was almost out of here. But it didn't quite have the distance. And uh, George Orta is the new batter. With one down now. And no. Actually. Is, that, is there one down? I think there is. I think this. I think, uh, yeah. Wait a minute. No. Wait a minute. Yes. There is. There is uh, two. Actually, th there's two outs now. So, with two down and a man at first, George Orta is up and he gets a 3 9, and that is going to be a strikeout. So, no runs come in for the White Sox. There we go to the top of the ninth. And the new pitcher for the White Sox 
Clay Carroll is out because they pinch hit for him, and it's going to be Terry Forster is the new pitcher. He was 2-12 in 1976 with a 437 earned run average, and he'll be the new pitcher. And uh, Frank White is the batter here in the top of the ninth. The Royals with a 1-0 lead. And they had to do everything they could to get that run. And it's a 5-9. That's going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. So he goes out 6-3. And Freddie Patek is up. He gets a 4-4. Four, four. That is going to be a ground ball to the third baseman. That is Bell. He is a 3 that is an 18. 18 and 3 is going to be a ground out. So he goes 5 to 3. And that brings up Stinson. Bob Stinson, who has the only RBI in this game. And he gets a 311. That's a ground ball pitcher A. So he goes out to the pitcher 1 to 3. No runs come in for the Royals. They have a 1 0 lead. And here come the White Sox. Ralph Gar is the leadoff batter. Patton is pitching a shutout, so he's staying out there. And he gets a 3-7, which is a ground ball shortstop. So Gar goes out 6-3 to lead off the ninth, the bottom of the ninth, with Jim Spencer up. And Jim Spencer gets a 5-5. He is a lefty. That is going to be a strikeout. So they're down to their last out, and that's Kevin Bell, and uh, he is a righty, and they are, they're going to let him hit. They're going to let him hit. He had uh, five home runs in 230 at bats that year, and that they just missed something. They hit right between two possible uh, things, but that's a pop out to shortstop. And that's your final score. It is a final score of one nothing. The much better Kansas City Royals beat the much worse Chicago White Sox one nothing. Goose Gossage pitched great, but he got the loss <coughs> and um, the uh, and the win goes to um, uh, the win goes to Marty Patton. Who pitched expertly here and it is one of one nothing final and that's going to be it for me sportsman z bob zolke signing off